In this problem, we're told a 9.3 kilogram child sits in a 3.7 kilogram high chair. A, draw the free body diagram for the child and find the normal force exerted by the chair on the child, and B, draw the free body diagram for the chair and find the normal force exerted by the floor on the chair. So I went ahead and drew the full thing, but for A and B, we're going to be drawing two different free body diagrams for uh, each of the components. So for A, we're going to be focusing on the child, and B, we're going to be focusing on the chair. So the, let's just go ahead and start with A. So A, we're going to be drawing the free body diagram uh, for the child. So this is going to be the child, right? And what is a free body diagram in the first place? So a free body diagram is basically where you just draw your image, and then you just label all the forces acting on that object. So in this case, we're just going to draw the forces acting on the child. So what forces do we have acting on it? So the force that's basically acting on every single object is just going to be the weight force. And so this force is the force due to gravity, which is just going to be equal to the mass times uh, the gravity, and that gives you the weight force. So it always goes down, right? Because when you have an object, think about like an apple or something, there's going to be some force pulling it down, right? Whenever you have it in the air, it's always going to come back to Earth if nothing else is, no other forces are acting on it. So that's just the weight force. And then we also have this other thing called a normal force. And what a normal force is, it's basically a force that acts perpendicular to the object, and it, uh, it just acts uh, opposite to it. So you can think about it, if you have something, like something on a table, right? There's some force that's pushing it so it doesn't go through it. So you want to think about it as just a force perpendicular to an object, basically a force that the ground is exerting onto it. So basically, if something's touching something, there's going to be a normal force that object is pushing onto your object, right? So it's basically just a perpendicular force. But this is going to be the free body diagram. And so what we want to do is find F sub n. So how do we find F sub n? So the way we do it is by taking the sum of the forces in both directions, or in the y direction, because uh, this is the direction we're focusing on. So we know force equals mass times acceleration. And when we say force, we're talking about the net force. And net force is found by taking the sum of the forces. And so the sum of the forces equal mass times acceleration. And what are the sum of the forces? So we have two different forces here, F sub n and mg. So F sub n is uh, going to be positive, right? So you add them up when you take the sum of the forces. And if it's going upwards, it's positive. If it's going downwards, it's negative. So we have F sub n is positive, right? Because it's going upwards. And then it's going to be minus mg because mg is going downwards. And it's going to be equal to uh, mass times acceleration. In this case, the object's just standing still. So acceleration is 0. So really, we just have F sub n minus mg equals 0. And if we add mg to the other side, what that tells us is the normal force is just equal to mg. So this is a general rule. Unless there's other forces acting on your object, the normal force is always going to be equal to the weight force. So since there's only this force, right, these have to be equal, or there would be like an imbalance, right? But we know they're going to be equal uh, because it's going to be equal to 0. So basically, the normal force is just equal to uh, the weight force, which is mass times uh, the gravity. right? So F sub n is going to be equal to the mass of our object, which we know the mass of the child is 9.3 kilograms. So 9.3 times g. And g is just uh, the uh, acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81. So 9.81 times 9.3, you want to go ahead and plug that in. And when you do that, you'll get uh, 91. So the normal force is going to be equal to 91.233. So you can just round to 91. It's going to be about 91 newtons. So the normal force acting on the child is going to be 91 newtons. So that's your answer to A. Uh, I'll go through B a bit quicker since I basically explained everything in A. But this time we're going to be doing the chair. So what are the forces we have acting on the chair? So we're going to have the, right, and there's, uh, there's going to be, right, let me draw the legs. So for the chair, we're also going to have a weight force, obviously, right? So we have a weight force, mg. We're going to have a normal force, f sub n, right, because it's going to be touching the ground. And so keep in mind what the normal force is from. It's going to be the result of the ground, right, pushing back against the chair. So remember, anything touching something, it's going to have a normal force, so it doesn't go through it. So it's going to be equal to that, right? But we also have the force of the child, right? We have the child sitting on it, so it's going to be exerting a force downwards. And so what this force is, it's going to be the weight of the child, right? So this was the weight of the chair, but we're also going to have another one, which is going to be the mass of the child times g, because there's going to be another force as the result of the child sitting on it. So this one, we didn't have any force above it. But in this one, the child's going to be sitting on it, so we have the force or the weight force of the child. So now when we do the same thing, right, force equals mass times acceleration, it's going to be zero, though. So we take the sum of the forces in the y, right, it's going to be equal to this, and then we want to add them up. So we have f sub n still, and then both of these are going down. So minus mg and then minus mc uh, times g, right, and this is going to be equal to zero. So if we solve for the normal force, it's actually going to be equal to the mass of the chair times gravity plus the mass of the child times gravity. 
So in this one, we just had the one, right? Just the child. But in this case, there's another thing above it. So we have to add uh, that in case, in that too. So the mass of the chair is going to be 3.7 times G, which is 9.81, right? Let me write this out. So 3.7 times 9.81 plus the mass of the child, which is 9.3 times 9.81. So you want to go ahead and plug these in. Uh, so 9.3 times 9.81 and when you go ahead and do this what you're going to get is that the normal force f sub n is equal to 127.53 and then newtons again we measure force in newtons so 127.53 newtons that's going to be the normal force exerted on the floor uh, or, or by the floor on the chair so that's going to be f sub n for b this was a and yeah so uh, you can round this however you want but essentially these are going to be both your answers and yeah hopefully you found this useful